Welcome to the Vans Aircraft Factory in Aurora, Oregon. Aurora State Airport is the location, and we're here with uh, Gus Fennell, who's going to explain what some of these noises are around us. We've come to see where Vans aircraft come from. Gus, first of all, you were explaining to me that you guys have somewhat of an advantage over the one-off home builder in terms of ordering aluminum and other parts like that. Yeah, that's correct. We buy so much aluminum, several tons a year, that uh, we can get a very good price on it, and we can also essentially lock in the price for a couple of years uh, simply because of the quantities we buy. So the advantage really for the home builder is that we can produce finished parts for really not much more than what the average guy would have to spend simply to buy the raw material from a metal supplier. Now, tell us how things have advanced over the years. You've got some really nice CNC punching equipment and everything here. Is that the way Vans started out, or has it become more and more automated over time? No, we've obviously taken advantage of the sort of rise of computer-controlled uh, machining capabilities and uh, manufacturing techniques. We got our first uh, CNC punch press. In fact, I think the one over there in the background we bought in uh, 1995. And we've now got three of those machines. Um, virtually all the parts are now produced in that CNC fashion where uh, they can be designed on the computer and then the files from that computer can come down to the machine which automatically makes the parts, which obviously has huge advantages in terms of accuracy and repeatability. How much commonality of parts is there among the models? I would think that with as varied a lineup as you have, you'd have to kind of plan that carefully for inventory. Yeah, we do. Inventory control around here is actually a really big job. We've got uh, at least a couple of people whose sole job is figuring out what we're going to need and when we're going to need it. We do try and minimize that, mostly to really increase the business efficiency by minimizing inventory. So we have a lot of commonality with parts. A lot of the two-place airplanes, like the RV6, 7, and 9, which are side-by-side -side models, all use a variety of parts that are fairly common to one another in terms of engine mounts, cowlings, canopies, that kind of thing. So yes, as much as possible, we try and reuse parts we already have in stock because it's just a more efficient way to go. We can make larger runs of parts. There's less setup and uh, time when you're actually setting up the machines to make those parts. So the overall efficiency is enhanced a lot if you can do that. Well, let's do some wandering around and see what happens to them after they come out of this end of the building. Okie doke. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Gus, I think one of the underappreciated, underestimated challenges that any small business faces when starting out is just in organizing and keeping track of all the, the pieces. You guys seem to have somewhat of a system developed here, but you've been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. We've got it down pretty much to an art. One of the things that Vans does well, as well as designing good planes and good products, is actually just the mechanics of getting the kits out. And uh, this area you see here is full of parts. Yeah, we've got a pretty good system going, which tells us essentially we have a couple of people who um, schedule stuff so that we know what we're going to need and when we're going to need it and can organize getting it made. And then obviously we have to store it in a warehouse here, which is what you're looking at. And then we have to be able to find the parts and put them in the correct boxes to ship them out to the builders. But yeah, we've got a pretty good system going down. Computers make it a bit easier, obviously, but um, a lot of it's just down to people keeping track of the stuff and knowing where it is. Now, I think everybody appreciates the cost benefits of just-in-time technology. However, if some guy breaks apart or needs to repair a plane, what's the most challenging part of keeping a part stock for your fleet of, what, it's about 6,000 flying aircraft now? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not too bad, in fact. We generally have uh, at least a small number of virtually every part on the shelf most of the time. Um, we do batch production, so um, we'll occasionally make a batch of parts based on the sort of forecast demand for those parts. But essentially it's down to um, the fact that if you call for a part, it'll usually be here. Um, the way we keep control of inventory is really on the kit production side, where we do keep a lead time going on, say, wing and fuselage and finish kits, which would normally be in the region of six to eight weeks, and that allows um, us to minimize the inventory for that at least. But for one or two parts, usually they'll be in stock. Occasionally not, but um, we try and keep um, a small stock of virtually every part. Even with the commonality of parts and the sharing of parts between some similar kits, there have to be 10,000 parts or something like that in this room. 
it's got to be a full-time job for somebody to just do the logistics work. It is. So, yeah, as I said, we had uh, we have at least two people whose only job is to keep track of inventory and make sure we're not running out of stuff and to ensure that parts get made in time, that uh, the lead time on the kits doesn't stretch out too far. But uh, as I said, we've pretty much been doing this for ooh, 35 years now, so we've got it down to pretty good science. We're shipping something of the order of 600 empennage kits every year and corresponding numbers of wing and fuselage and finish kits. It probably works out to at least um, maybe... Uh, six seven thousand boxes of kits leaving here every uh, year and so that's one number every day that has to be uh, picked and uh, put in the right box and sent to the right person do you have a fairly good shipping system down i mean are you happy with the way that works Oh, yeah. yeah. Typically, um, we use a lot of uh, UPS and FedEx for smaller packages when it gets too big for, uh, say, some of the uh, kit parts and quick builds. Those will usually go by road freight, or uh, we have a guy called Tony Partain who uh, he has a fleet of trailers which will actually deliver a quick build, and it'll leave, stay on that trailer from the time it leaves vans to the time it's delivered to the customer, and that ensures a sort of minimum amount of hassle and breakage and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we've got a pretty good uh, system going of, of actually getting the parts out. We send a lot of parts overseas by air freight, and uh, again, we've, we've got uh, at least two or three international shippers we use who take care of that for us. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Well, we're out here now with the uh, most of the family of Vans kit planes, and Gus, what kind of family lineage is obvious among these different planes, and where do you think the Vans family line will go from here? Well, the, the family lineage, what we've got out here is, um, I guess, the, the oldest plane we've got out here would be, in fact, be the RV-8A over there, um, and the RV-7, a couple of RV-10s, and lastly the RV-12 behind us here. They've all got uh, some family lineage, but we've, we've changed the planes depending on the purpose that they're designed to do. The 8A, for instance, was a, an aerobatic plane uh, designed for sort of sport flying, and the 7A was really a side-by-side -side version of the 8A, if you like, and carry on from our older RV6 model. The 10 here was moving on into very much more of a purpose-built cross-country airplane for four adults to get in and travel cross-country, so we changed the wing from being um, something suitable for aerobatic sport flying to something more suitable for efficient cross-country travel so it lost the aerobatic capability but picked up a little bit in terms of speed and more docile stall characteristics and then with the RV12 here obviously we moved on into the light sport category where uh, we're looking at uh, economical simple and hopefully uh, low cost flying again with a strong emphasis on sort of safety and the ability for a low time pilot to fly the airplane well. Uh, Vans has been here for several years now in this location do you think the company can stay here for a while or do you think there will be expansion necessary elsewhere? I guess we'll have to see where the business takes us really. At the moment, this building suits us fairly well. We've been in this one since 2000, and it was purpose-built for vans uh, to move into, hence the large hangar and the prototype shop. I think we've got the capability of staying here for quite a while. Um, uh, at the moment, it fulfills most of our needs. I could see that um, hopefully if the business does expand in the future, we might need more space. But here at the Aurora Airport, we've got a bit more land that we could expand onto if the need arises. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to show us around. I think it's probably been very instructional for uh, the thousands of people who have flown or hope to fly kits that they've received from you. Thanks for the time, Gus. All right. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks a lot.